In a time of great despair, when the Israelites were exiled in Babylon, a prophet named Ezekiel emerged with a message that would resonate through the ages. Ezekiel was known for his unique and captivating visions, but there's one that stands out above the rest. It's a vision that speaks directly to the heart of anyone who has ever felt hopeless, lost, or spiritually dry. So let me ask you this. Have you ever found yourself in a place where all seems lost? Where the very bones of your faith feel scattered and lifeless? Well, that's exactly where we find Ezekiel in this remarkable story. The vision, Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 10. Now let's dive deeper into this extraordinary vision that Ezekiel experienced. To really understand the weight of this moment, we need to know a bit more about who Ezekiel was and the times he lived in. Ezekiel was a priest and a prophet, born into a priestly family during a time of great upheaval for the Israelites. The Babylonians had conquered Judah, destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, and taken many of the Israelites into exile. It was a dark and desperate time, a time when hope seemed lost. It's in this context that Ezekiel found himself hand-picked by God for a unique prophetic ministry. And one of the most profound visions he received was this vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. So, there he was, transported by the Spirit of God to this valley. And when the Bible says valley, don't picture a lush green paradise. No, this was a place of death, a barren wasteland filled with the remains of what once had been living, breathing beings. As Ezekiel looked around, all he could see were bones, dry, sun-bleached bones scattered as far as the eye could see. It was a chilling sight, a stark picture of hopelessness and despair. And yet, in the midst of this macabre scene, God posed a question that must have seemed almost absurd. Son of man, can these bones live? Now, if we're honest, I think most of us would have been tempted to give a pretty straightforward answer. No way, Lord. These bones are long dead. There's no life left in them. But Ezekiel, perhaps sensing that God was up to something extraordinary, responded with humility and faith. Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And that's when things started to get really interesting. God told Ezekiel to prophesy to these dry bones, to speak his words of life over them. Can you imagine what that must have felt like? Here's Ezekiel, surrounded by death, being told to preach to a bunch of lifeless bones. It seemed crazy, impossible even. But Ezekiel obeyed. He prophesied as God commanded, and suddenly, there was a noise, a rattling sound. The bones started coming together, bone to bone. Tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But here's the thing, they were still just lifeless bodies. They looked whole, but they had no breath, no spirit in them. So God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the breath, to call the wind from the four corners of the earth, to breathe life into these slain. And as Ezekiel prophesied, an amazing thing happened. Breath entered them, and they came to life, standing up on their feet, a vast army. It's a vision that's both haunting and awe-inspiring, but it's not just a cool story to tell around a campfire. There's a deep, profound meaning here, a message of hope and restoration that speaks across the centuries. And as we'll see, it's a message that has the power to breathe new life into our own dry bones, no matter how dead or hopeless they may seem. The Interpretation, Ezekiel 37 verses 11 to 14. Now that we've seen the incredible vision of the dry bones coming to life, you might be wondering, okay, but what does it all mean? Well, that's exactly what God explains to Ezekiel in the next few verses. You see, those dry bones weren't just a random symbol or a cool visual effect. They represented something specific and deeply meaningful to the Israelites at that time. In verse 11, God tells Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. Now, remember the context here. The Israelites had been through a lot. They had been conquered, exiled, and scattered. They were living in a foreign land, far from their homes and their temple. They felt cut off from God, like their hopes and dreams had been shattered into a million pieces. In a way, they were like those dry bones, lifeless, hopeless, and disconnected. They even say it themselves in verse 11. Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. It's a bleak picture, isn't it? But here's the amazing thing. God doesn't leave them in that state. He has a plan to bring life back to those dry bones, to restore hope to his people. 
In verses 12 to 14, God makes a series of promises that are just breathtaking in their scope and power. First, he says, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. Now this isn't literal grave robbing. It's a metaphor for restoration, for bringing the Israelites back from the grave of their exile and despair. But God doesn't stop there. He goes on to say, I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. This is a promise of homecoming, of returning to the land that God had promised to their ancestors. And here's the kicker. God says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. This is the real heart of the matter. It's not just about physical restoration or geographical homecoming. It's about spiritual renewal, about God breathing his own life and spirit into his people. This is a profound promise, one that echoes throughout the Bible. In the New Testament, Paul writes in Romans 8:11, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. You see, the same spirit that breathed life into those dry bones, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, is the spirit that God promises to put within his people. And when that happens, everything changes. Dry bones become living, breathing, hope-filled beings once again. The deeper meaning. As we dive deeper into the meaning of Ezekiel's vision, it's important to realize that this isn't just a cool story with some nice symbolism. There are layers of profound truth here that speak to the very heart of God's character and his relationship with his people. At its core, this vision is about resurrection and restoration. It's about God's ability to take something that seems utterly dead and lifeless and infuse it with new life and purpose. But it's not just about physical restoration. The dry bones coming together and being covered with flesh is a powerful image, but it's not the whole story. Remember, after the bones were reassembled and covered, they were still just lifeless bodies. It wasn't until God breathed his spirit into them that they truly came alive. This is a crucial point, and it's one that we see echoed throughout the Bible. In the creation story, when God creates man, he forms him from the dust of the earth. But it's not until God breathes into man's nostrils the breath of life that he becomes a living being. Genesis 2.7 The same principle is at work in Ezekiel's vision. The physical restoration is important, but it's the spiritual infusion of God's life-giving spirit that truly brings resurrection. This speaks to the idea that true life, the kind of abundant life that Jesus talks about in John 10.10, 10, isn't just about physical health or material well-being. It's about being spiritually alive, connected to the source of all life, which is God himself. But here's the thing. This restoration and revival isn't something we can manufacture on our own. Just like Ezekiel couldn't bring those dry bones to life by his own power, we can't conjure up spiritual vitality by sheer force of will. It's God's spirit that brings the dead to life, that breathes new life into dry bones. This is both a comforting and a challenging truth. It's comforting because it means we don't have to have it all together. We don't have to be perfect or strong enough on our own. We can come to God in our brokenness, in our dryness, and trust in his power to restore us. Contemporary application. So what does this ancient vision have to do with us, living in the 21st century? At first glance, it might seem like a distant, irrelevant story, but when we look closer, we start to see that the themes and truths of Ezekiel's vision are just as applicable today as they were thousands of years ago. Think about it. We live in a world that can often feel like a valley of dry bones. We're surrounded by brokenness, despair, and decay. Just turn on the news or scroll through social media and you'll see countless examples of lives, relationships, and communities that seem utterly lifeless and hopeless. But here's the good news. The same God who breathed life into those dry bones is still at work today. He's still in the business of resurrection and restoration, and he's still calling us, his people, to be part of that life-giving work. In fact, I would argue that as Christians, we have a unique role to play in this process. We're called to be agents of hope and healing in a hurting world. We're called to speak life into dead situations, to love the unlovable, to serve the forgotten, and to point people to the source of all life, 
and hope, which is Jesus Christ. But let's be real, this isn't always easy. There are times when we feel like dry bones ourselves. We get weary, discouraged, and drained. We face challenges and obstacles that seem insurmountable. We might even start to wonder if God's promises of restoration and renewal are really true. That's where the power of the Holy Spirit comes in. Just as God breathed life into those dry bones through His Spirit, He wants to breathe new life into us. He wants to fill us with His presence, His power, and His purpose. He wants to remind us that we're not alone, that we're part of a greater story, and that He's still in control. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Even when we feel like we're crumbling and decaying on the outside, God is at work renewing and restoring us on the inside. But it's not just about personal renewal. Just as Ezekiel's vision was about the restoration of a whole people, God's restorative work today is about the renewal of communities, nations, and the world as a whole. As Christians, we're called to be part of that work, to be bearers of hope and agents of reconciliation in a divided and struggling world. This means getting involved in our communities, serving those in need, and working for justice and righteousness. It means being a voice for the voiceless, a friend to the friendless, and a light in the darkness. It means trusting that the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is at work in us and through us, bringing life and hope to even the most desperate situations. Is it easy? No. Is it comfortable? Rarely. But is it worth it? Absolutely. Because when we allow ourselves to be used by God, when we open ourselves to His life-giving Spirit, we get to be part of something greater than ourselves. We get to watch in awe as dry bones come to life, as broken people find healing, as shattered communities experience restoration. So let me ask you this. Where are the dry bones in your life, in your family, your workplace, your community? Where do you feel hopeless or helpless? Those are precisely the places where God wants to bring new life. Those are the places where He's calling you to speak hope, to love boldly, and to trust in His resurrection power. It won't always be easy. There will be times when you feel like you're prophesying to a valley of lifeless bones. But remember, it's not your job to bring the dead to life. That's God's job. Your job is to be faithful, to speak the truth in love, to serve with compassion, and to trust that God is at work, even when you can't see it. And as you do, as you allow God's Spirit to work in and through you, you just might be amazed at the new life that springs forth. You might watch in wonder as dry bones rattle and come together, as flesh and sinew appear, and as the breath of God brings new hope and purpose to even the most lifeless situations. That's the power of Ezekiel's vision for us today. It's a reminder that we serve a God of resurrection and restoration, a God who specializes in bringing life out of death. And it's a call to be part of that life-giving work, to let God breathe His Spirit into us and through us, for the sake of a world in need of hope. What do you think? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon for more content just like this. Until next time.